Sour, the White House had confirmed this new agreement between Israel and Hamas to extend a truce, a pause in the fighting situation for more hostages. Right now, the White House press briefing is underway. You see John Kirby there. Let's watch together. Extension of the original agreement, as well as efforts to extend the pause even from there. Uh, just a quick update on the figures. As of uh, the, the morning of November 26, 200 trucks were dispatched to the Rafah crossing, and 137 trucks of supplies were offloaded by the United Nations reception point in Gaza, making it the biggest humanitarian convoy received since the 7th of October. This much-needed relief into Gaza to alleviate, alleviate the suffering of Palestinian civilians there. Of course, most of them have nothing to do with Hamas. Uh, and to date, we have assisted over 840 Americans and their families who have departed and sought the support of our team on the ground in Egypt. And with that, we'll take some questions. Thank you, Admiral. Um, a few things here. The president uh, called conditional aid for Israel a worthwhile thought. Is he actually considering conditioning aid or not? What he also said right after uh, acknowledging that it was a worthwhile thought was that the approach he has chosen to take so far has produced results and outcomes. Many of them I just walked you through in my opening statement. Um, so the approach that we're taking with Israel and quite frankly with our partners in the region uh, is working. It's getting aid in to people that need it. It's getting a pause in the fighting. It's getting hostages out. It's getting Americans out. Uh, and quite frankly, we continue to urge and will continue to urge the Israelis as they conduct military operations to do so with the utmost care for innocent civilian so life. Democrats in, the part, in his party who say we need to start conditioning aid going forward, what would he say? I think he would say exactly what he said to y'all yesterday when he got asked this question. Uh, it's a worthwhile thought, but the approach that I'm taking now is working. The approach that we're taking now is working. It's getting results. The increasing dangers to U.S. military personnel in the Gulf. Um, I, I know you outlined in a series of appearances this morning what happened. Um, but are we to continue seeing this sort of, well, let me put it this way, is that strategy of, of dealing with it as it happens going to continue to be the strategy? You've seen some say there should perhaps be a more robust response to these ongoing attacks, whether it's from Iranian-backed militias in Syria or Iraq, whether it's the Houthis. Is, the, is there any thought of changing up how that's done? I don't think we're going to get in the business of telegraphing our punches, Ed. Uh, we've, uh, we've responded uh, forcefully against the threats to our forces in Iraq and Syria, and now uh, our forces in the uh, Gulf region, uh, the Gulf of Oman, the Gulf of Aden, uh, will continue to do that as appropriate. Is striking in Yemen still an option? Again, I'm not going to sell the graph punches. We will take these steps appropriate to protect our troops and, uh, and our forces uh, in the Middle East region. I would add that the Mason is attached to the USS Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group, which the President dispatched to the region specifically to address the increase in the tensions. Uh, any possibility that Americans will be among the 20 that we release over the next few days? Well, we certainly hope so. I mean, we're going to watch this very, very closely. We're certainly hoping that a another batch of uh, hostages gets released today as part of the fourth and final day of the original agreement. Um, we're going to be watching closely to see if any Americans are in that group. But as it as it has come out over the last three days, we don't really know until you get into the end game who's going to be actually on that list. And, and then even then, you got to watch closely to seeing if who's on the list is the folks that actually come out. So we're watching and, and hoping. And you spoke of the president's conversation at a critical moment to break that impasse. Can you talk a little more about what that impasse was and how that was broken its conversations? I mean, it was really, it came down to, uh, oh, you're talking about the, over the weekend, yeah. it was really more about the, the lists and who was on it, and, um, and I don't want to get into more detail than that. It's a similar issue to what we face today, uh, the reason why there's been a little bit of a delay, because there was a, um, a difference of a view, if, if you might, uh, over the, the list, and the fact that mothers were not originally going to be allowed to come out with their children, and that's been resolved. So it really had to do with the, the who. And very, very quickly, uh, the newly elected leader of Argentina says he's coming to the U.S., uh, also to D.C. Uh, any meeting scheduled with administration officials, uh, with the president, with anybody else while he's here? Yes, uh, President-elect uh, uh, Malay will be coming to Washington, D.C., largely to meet with the IMF over uh, and the World Bank over uh, 
um, over their fiscal and economic issues. Uh, but while he's here in town, he'll have a chance to meet with some National Security Council uh, uh, folks, including uh, Jake Sullivan. No plans to meet with the president, right? Like no plans to meet with the president. The president will, as you think you know, be on travel in the middle of the week. Thank you. Uh, on the remaining Americans who are being held, do you have any more clarity on whether they're being held by Hamas or with one of these other terrorist groups? No. And, you know, all along you've been very clear about concerns that a broader ceasefire would only benefit Hamas. Sullivan was pretty clear yesterday in saying that, you know, Hamas has been able to gain some benefit from this. How concerned are you that the longer this truce lasts, now six days, um, that Hamas will benefit? And how do you weigh that? It's a real risk. Um, uh, you have to expect a group like Hamas, a terrorist group. Uh, which clearly doesn't abide by laws of war, we try to take advantage of any pause in the fighting for their own benefit. So we're watching that closely, as well as our Israeli counterparts. You can you can bet that they're watching that closely. Uh, but, and I don't want to speak for uh, the Israelis, but I mean this is a, a calculated risk that Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war cabinet are willing to take in order to get those hostages out. So it's a it's a balance. Um, and as you've also heard the Israelis say that once. Uh, the pauses are over, uh, they intend to go right back at military operations. And when you say that you know, Hamas has been able to get some benefits so far, is that restocking, resupplying? What does that benefit? It's, it's, you know, I would just say that without getting into intelligence issues, that any pause in the fighting uh, could benefit uh, uh, your enemy in terms of time to refit, to rest your fighters, to rearm them, uh, re-equip them. Um, uh, you know, a pause in the fighting can can be seen as a, as a benefit. But I, again, I want to stress, and this was always part of the calculus, uh, any discussion of pauses uh, um, was always part of the calculus, that, that Hamas might try to benefit from it. But so too have the Israeli people benefited by the return of, of their loved ones and hostages. So too have the American people benefited now with little Abigail back with her family. So again, it's a balance. Um, and um, again, I won't speak for the Israeli Defense Forces, but when, but, but when they have, when, when these pauses are over, then they have made it very clear that they're going to continue to target Hamas leadership. John, how many Americans are still being held hostage, and do you have proof of life? We think the number is, um, well, it's less than 10, probably in the neighborhood of, you know, about eight to nine. Um, but we don't necessarily have firm, solid information on each and every one of them. And why haven't the two American women who are with the with Abigail? What what happened with them? Why haven't they been released? Well, we certainly hope that we'll see them uh, in, in in hopefully today, and if not today, certainly over the next couple of days, we want to see them back with their families where they belong as well. The the lists are developed by Hamas, uh, and then of course there's the Israelis develop their list of Palestinian prisons that they're going to release. And we're not involved in the specific drafting of the lists and the determination on the Masa side of who's going to come out on any given day. Obviously, we want to see those two American women released as soon as possible. And the truce being extended two days, what, what happens now? Do you want to get, like, three days next or a permanent truce? What, what, what's the thing? It's like I said in my opening statement, Steve. We're, we're grateful that we've got an extra two days to work with here. That'll, that'll result in the release of 20 more individuals, yes. women and children. And as I said uh, right at the top, we'd certainly like to see even that extension extended further uh, until all the hostages are released. That's really the goal here, get all the hostages home with their families where they belong. And we, you know, however, however long that could take. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on the question about uh, Millet visiting Washington, you mentioned that most of his meetings would be with the IMF, <laughs> but who will be he meeting at the White House, at the NSC? And what are the expectations of the White House for this meeting? And more broadly, what are the expectations of the president for the relationship between the two nations? I already answered that question. He's going to be, he'll have a chance to meet with Jake Sullivan um, and potentially other folks here at the NSC. We'll have to see how that shakes out. Uh, the president won't, unfortunately, be able to meet with him because of domestic travel. Um, but uh, obviously, we want to continue to look for ways to cooperate with Argentina. Argentina is a, a, a healthy and vibrant partner uh, in this hemisphere on many, many issues. Um, and so we're looking forward to obviously hearing what the president-elect's ideas are and where he wants to go on policy issues and making sure that we have a, a chance to keep that line of channel, or that channel communication open. Uh, John, I want to go to, uh, to Africa and the Congo, if you will. Uh, updates after the visit from DNI, DNI head, national security and state. 
and also um, maybe connecting this with the president's meeting with the president of Angola on trade that deals with the Congo. All right, so you've got John Kirby there talking about what it took to get this deal uh, done between Israel and Hamas and what the White House is hoping will happen is that they can make good use of the extra two days in a ceasefire. It's interesting. Um, Cutter in there, and I've got it right here. So I want to make sure they called it an ongoing mediation and agreement. I, I actually, it does not say truce in, in what they say. I didn't start seeing that until others started reporting it. And that nomenclature is important. Yeah. Because, and even Kirby acknowledged, any break in fighting allows the enemy to regroup, regain, rearm, so and so. So this is not necessarily a truce. They certainly aren't sitting down. No. And, and again, they're using the hostages as the leverage to stop this war. And everyone is playing into their hands. And look, I, I, uh, your heart breaks for these families. Your heart breaks for the Israelis who are wondering where their loved ones are. At the same time, we've seen this before. In 2006, Israel did a swap. I think they traded something like, what, 2,000 over, over 2, fighters, 1,000 fighters, and they got one corporal back. One of the fighters they released was a guy named Yahya Sinwar. He's the man who orchestrated this attack on October 7th. So there is a price to pay, I think, by continuing to play this game of trading lives and treating lives as if it's currency. These are precious human lives. It's not currency. Uh, you know, I we hear have you to say draw that. The line and in Marie, the you and I were talking off camera. I, I think you leave no one behind. I, I think you do what it takes. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand yep. what you're saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then you say to the rest of the world, we're with Israel. And you go in and you take those scorpions out. You get as many hostages, you have as many ceasefires yeah. as you possibly can because they are rearming. Yes. And they have Iranian-backed yep. weapons. So you can't just lay, you know, lay down on the ground and, right. and do negotiations forever. But you reach a point. Your thoughts? That's exactly right. This is how we get these hostages home. I wish there was a perfect option here. There are not in these situations. That's why Hamas takes hostages. If we want these Israelis, Americans, and other people from around the world home, this is how we do it. Let's also be clear that before this ceasefire, this truce, whatever word we're using, Israel did quite a bit of damage to Hamas, backed by American firepower. And after this ends, after we get as many hostages Let's out as we can, again. they're going to do it again. So I, I think, you know, this, this is how we get these videos we've seen of nine-year-old, you know, sons being reunited with their fathers. This is it. And the Biden team negotiating with Qatar behind the scenes, but very powerfully to get people out. And I think that relationship is really important here. So where's everybody else in the region, though, when you say the U.S. and mm -hmm. Israel go in after we get, you know, as many hostages mm -hmm. as... And by the way, I don't know who's dealing with PIJ, the Palestinian Islamic Jihadists, because that, that's a different situation, Absolutely. too. You heard Kirby say he doesn't know, you know, which hostages or yeah. with them or how We're many. We're not in charge of the but, list. But what about the rest of the region? I mean, because they ought to be joining us when we go in to clear out those scorpions alongside Israel. And in our minds, I, Marie and I are saying, go get the hostages and then go kill everybody who did this yeah. Mm -hmm. to That's, Israel. That is the key question. And Marie, in all due respect, you know, you say they've been negotiating powerfully. Yes, we have gotten hostages back. We should have never been hostage because I don't believe this attack would have taken place on President Trump's watch, because this administration has not shown strength on the world stage. The one question that should have been asked was not asked in that briefing, and maybe it was asked before we dropped in. I didn't hear it, though. My question, if I'm a White House correspondent, would have been, why have you not redesignated the Houthis as a terrorist organization? Right. Guess Great who question. did? President Trump yeah. on January 15th of 2021. They were delisted on February 4th by the Biden administration. And meanwhile, now we learn Houthis are trying to hijack ships. They're shooting off ballistic missiles near Americans. Why have you not listed them? Pompeo told me it's inexcusable. Why haven't you relisted them? Yeah. You know what's interesting about that, too? Because we've been talking about Darfur and Sudan, and, and not a lot of people are talking about that. And I want to spend just a second to show people how things are rolling out right now. We've got a lot of hate and evil in the world, and the rapes and the beheading and all of that yeah. you're seeing in other places. Darfur has seen a lot of atrocities, yes. but evil is on the march. I, I, I post about this a lot. And, and so notice there in Sudan, House to house, they went looking for non-Arabs in recent weeks yeah. and killing them. Yeah. And the Biden White House was part of a ceasefire negotiation along with the Saudis, and it didn't hold. And now it seems like we've backed away. I, I don't know what the I story don't. is. Nobody's focused on well, it. Well, the list of people that 
uh, I need to pray for every night seems to continue to yes. grow. It, 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 and they're the doing the this, same yeah, thing. And at the beginning of the year, it was people in Ukraine, and now it's people in Israel and all over the world. Um, some stories don't get enough attention or as much attention as they deserve. A part of this issue also is what's going to happen after this war ends. And President Biden has said that he wants a two-state solution, and he's calling for the Palestinian Authority to take over Gaza, which will not fly with, with Israel. Uh, there is a Wall Street Journal op-ed that called the Palestinian Authority and the Fatah party JV Hamas. They celebrated October 7th, and they recently denied that the music festival attack took place. And as a matter of fact, they said if it did, it was is Israel killed its own people. Yeah. So oh there's going to be a lot of questions over how who takes over this region and what is to come when this fighting ends. The other thing I do want to point out that uh, originally was pointed out by Lucas Tomlinson. He's follow he was following the president in Nantucket. Mm -hmm. The president made a speech after uh, the first American was released, little Abigail, as we now know. And he, uh, there was one really interesting moment where he talked about the future of Hamas, mm -hmm. and he chose his words very carefully. He started to say the goal for Hamas should be the complete, and it almost sounded like he was going to say eradication, but he stopped himself and he said the goal should be that Hamas no longer controls the Gaza Strip, which is in opposition to what Israel would want in this situation. That may be so, because we are in delicate hostage negotiations right now, but I did think that was notable. Yeah, no, it is notable. So so what would they want? Like a, a relocation -lo development program for Hamas <laughs> to get them out of Gaza? Because as long as they're in Gaza, they're, they're going to try to kill Israelis. That's exactly, it's in their charter. Yeah. That's, that is their goal. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.